Forodon cannabis, the cannabis or bong aphid, is a specialist aphid species of cannabis, hence the species name. The genus name Forodon is a combination of the ancient Greek word derivation for, which means to carry, and Latin derivation of donum, which means gift. An interpretation of this name might be gift carrier, a reference to the fact that many aphids are born pregnant and live birth clonal gift offspring. Forodon cannabis was first documented in 1860 by entomologist and botanist Giovanni Passerini in Gliophidi con un prospetto de Henry et alcune specie nuovo italiane, aphids with an overview of genera and some new Italian species. Along with other Forodon species such as Forodon humuli, Forodon humuli foliae, Forodon japonensis, Forodon lanshawensi, and Forodon persifoliae, and possibly the elusive Forodon verbuni, Forodon cannabis is a member of the aphid tribe Macrosaphini, which comprises about half of the aphids of the subfamily Aphidinae, itself comprising almost half of all documented aphid species, developing in the late Cretaceous 80 to 150 million years ago, and quickly radiating with different species in the Paleogene 43 to 66 million years ago, when many such aphids have been posited to have switched from feeding on primarily conifers and other coniferae and other gymnosperms to flowering plants known as angiosperms. This was also a time of great diversification for other animals like mammals. Despite the millennia-long history of cannabis cultivation and literally 200 plus years of documented forewarning, Forodon cannabis has remained pestiferous and understudied in contemporary cannabis cultivation as of 2019 for a number of reasons, such as prohibitionary efforts and subsequently a lack of research regarding them. According to the 1976 research report Betrug zur Kenntnis der Bionomie und Morphologie der Hanf Latlau Forodon Cannabis, or Contribution to the Knowledge of the Bionomics and Morphology of the Hemp Aphid Forodon Cannabis, researchers mention a propensity for cannabis aphid populations in the former German Democratic Republic to skew heavily towards winged aladies, up to 78% in some bioassays, and for egg-laying forms called oviparae to lay eggs on the seed capsules of hemp in which the next generation will overwinter. Phylogenetically speaking, humulus, the genus to which hops belong, and cannabis are most closely related to each other of the members of their family Cannabaceae, having diverged from a common ancestor around 18.23 million years ago, with the basal genus of all Cannabaceae, Aphananthae, speciating 40 to 50 million years before. Likewise, the cannabis aphid Forodon cannabis is very closely related to the hop aphid Forodon humuli, and the comparatively extensive research on the latter can give insight into the relationship between the former and its specialized cannabis host, on which it only feeds, to the exclusion of all other plants, as is currently documented. The hop aphid is known also as the damson hop aphid, as it is known to feed on its primary tree hosts of the prunus species like the damson plum, prunus domestica, being their holocyclic hosts, the return to which is important for completing their life cycle. Another important aphid pest of cannabis, the rice root aphid Ropelsiphum rufi abdominale, also host alternates on prunus in its native range of eastern Asia. While hop aphids vector viral pathogens such as hop mosaic virus, potato virus Y, and plum pox virus, feeding does not necessarily cause curling and other changes in hosts inherently, such as it does with various forms of Brachycotus helichrysi the leaf curling plum aphid, caused by salivary proteins and other biochemicals that affect the phytohormonal signaling pathway of plants, among other physiological processes. The shelter caused by their pseudogalls are used by hop aphids in order to avoid predators on their primary hosts, and this can be considered a parabiotic or commensalic relationship, as the recruitment of guards in the form of honeydew attracted ants as well as the sheltering in pseudogalls likely increases population survivability of the hop aphid on prunus, increasing the volume of the spring alate migrants that travel to hops, 
which then travel to Prunus hosts in autumn to lay eggs for overwintering. Methyl salicylate, E2 hexanol, and beta caryophyllene attract hop aphids migrating in spring. It may be prudent to consider the potential for the cannabis aphid to do the same, either as an adaptive response in the future, or as an already existing ability yet to be observed. Further, LATs of hop aphids are not produced on prunus in response to crowding, but in response to changes in quality of the phloem they feed on inside their plant host. Some European assessments of host colonization by the hop aphid have described aerial dispersal as mainly short range, less than 20 kilometers, particularly in autumn, with spring dispersal occurring by stratiform drift along with other dispersal techniques like cumuliform high-level migration and boundary layer migration. In the former Czechoslovakia, research showed high ratios of nitrogen to carbohydrates in young prunus leaves favored the production of apterae, non-winged forms, whilst the lower ratios which occur in mature leaves produce more elate, or winged forms. And if true for hop aphids, on cannabis it may be useful in disrupting the establishment of a population as many aphid species populate faster on plant sap which is more nitrogenous. Many aphids are generalists and their ability to adapt to new hosts is well known. To do so, populations must be able to process various defense compounds produced by the host. Even the hop aphid has been found to have difficulties with compounds produced by its host despite specialization, and cultivars that produce more of them, such as Epsilon Merolin, Caryophyllene, and Germacrine D, some of which are also found in cannabis, are less suitable than those that do not. It is possible that the cannabis aphid, being physiologically similar, may have some of the same susceptibilities. Many botanically derived substances affect general aphid physiology negatively, such as natural pyrethrins, azadiractin, chitinolytic compounds like chitinase and citric acid, salicylic acid, as well as other naturally occurring substances such as elemental sulfur. Forodon humuli is known to have become resistant to several classes of chemistry, including organophosphates, carbamates, and pyrethroids due to their historical application on hops. Cannabis crops have also been exposed to these compounds at various points in history, and it is possible analogous physiological processes that confer resistance to the hop aphid could, or already, have developed in the cannabis aphid. Many organisms feed on aphids including the hop aphid, as generalists like the nymphs of Chrysopidae, green lacewings, and Hemorobiidae, brown lacewings minute pirate bugs of Anthocoridae like Aureus majusculus, larvae of Syrphidae or hoverflies, Geochoridae or big-eyed bugs, soldier beetles of Cantharidae, and whirligig mites of Anistidae. Many parasitic wasps are known on Forodon humuli, like those in Aphelinidae, such as Aphidius matricariae, Aphidius irvi, Diae ratiella raphae, Preon occidentale, as well as a member of Aphidiinae. Lysiphlebus tisicipes, Aphidius metricariae in particular, has been documented parasitizing the cannabis aphid in the Kashmir Valley in 2014. Parasitic wasps used effectively in integrated pest management of hop aphid include Aphidius colomani and Aphidolides aphidomyza, though for many parasitic wasps, hyperparasitic wasps exist which may lower overall parasitic wasp populations by infesting them. Research on biocontrol species that affect the cannabis aphid specifically is lacking, but on the hop aphid species like the entomopathogenic fungi Buveria bassiana and Verticillium lecanii, predatory lady beetles like the transverse, convergent, western blood red, two spot, and seven spot are associated with their reduced populations. In fact, the hop aphid is considered highly suitable for the development of both the convergent and the transverse lady beetle, and they may also find the cannabis aphid similarly suitable. Other species associated with the reduction in many aphids, including the hop aphid, include the predatory plant bugs Derecaris brevis and those in the genus Heterotoma. Herbivore-induced plant volatiles, like methyl salicylate and other volatile organic compounds, 
have been shown to attract certain predatory arthropods, including many of the above species, in conditions where the environment was favorable, such as where there isn't interference by volatiles from other plants and artificial sources, where the dosage itself is not too strong nor too weak, and in cases where predators have not been desensitized or conditioned against responding to them. Pheromones that attract the hop aphids, such as iridoid nepetalactol, may additionally be used to trap the cannabis aphid and possibly even ensure contact with microbial and chemical treatment agents. Certain isomers of nepetalactone, as well as other cyclopentanoid monoterpenoids, also elicit attractive responses in many aphids, so non-target attraction must be considered. Appropriately applied, microbial agents in particular, and especially those isolates tailored to specific species, can cause an epizootic event in the local cultivation space, where a population is infected rapidly and often causes extirpation and the subsequent absence of the target pest species for a period of time. Forodon humuli was found to be particularly susceptible to an isolate of Bouveria bassiana, sampled from Schizophis graminum, numbered 2883, which showed mortalities above 97% consistently in bioassays and did best at a conidial density of 10 million per milliliter in laboratory trials. However, field trials in commercial hops did not yield treatment, but this is attributed to the hot, dry environment of the Boise, Idaho Valley where the trial was made, and germination is greatly impaired at relative humidities below 50%. With so many similarities between their diet, physiology, morphology, and shared evolutionary history, Forodon species in general, and Forodon humuli in particular, make good models for assessing Forodon cannabis. From an evolutionary and agricultural analysis, both of their hosts as well as their own development, they are clearly closely related, and crop management practices for the past few centuries of hops and various prunus species in particular have given insight into their movement, host range, resistances, and susceptibilities. These details facilitate the creation of more nuanced integrated pest management strategies for the cannabis aphid, while general knowledge of aphid physiology facilitates the deployment of existing strategies more efficaciously.